podcast listeners. Well, the good news is your dates are here. The bad news is they're dead. (laughs) This is What Scares Us, a podcast brought to you by the Ann Arbor District Library, where four friends discuss movies that make us look differently at the night sky or have us keeping an eye out for creeps and sometimes have us screaming like banshees. I'm Amanda, and I'm joined by three other staff members of the library. I'm Christopher. I'm Matt. And I'm Allison. (laughs) Today, we are discussing the 1986 film Night of the Creeps, written and directed by Fred Decker in his directorial debut. The film stars Jason Lively, Jill Whitlow, and Tom Atkins. Yep, I picked another movie with Tom Atkins in it. Uh, So what is this movie? The movie begins in 1959, where an alien experiment crashes to Earth and infects a fraternity member. Scientists freeze the body, and we flash forward to 1986, where two geeks pledging a fraternity accidentally thaw the corpse, which proceeds to infect the campus with parasites that transform their host into killer zombies. It's a sci-fi horror comedy. It's like you took a blender and threw in some B-movies, some 1950s sci-fi horror, some Romero zombies, some Animal House, some mega 80s outfits, a love story, and some cheesy 1980s slashers, and the result is this movie. And I don't know about you all, but I am not mad about it one bit. Uh, So before I hear what you all think about it, uh, some fun facts I dug up. The film bombed at the box office no surprise, Um, but it has since become a cult classic loved by many. The writer-director Fred Decker's follow-up to this movie was Monster Squad, which is one of my favorites, and that one also flopped at the box office and later gained a big following after the video release, so he had both of these films come out. There were total flops that, like, 30 years later, folks eventually fell in love with and adore and just go nuts over. Also worth noting is that when Creeps opened 37 years ago this month on August 22nd, 1986, also playing at theaters that same weekend were The Fly, Stand By Me, Aliens, Top Gun, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, and Friday the 13th Part 6, plus probably some other amazing movies you may have heard of. Wow. I wonder it didn't do well. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So it had a little bit of competition. Um, so the, the the director, Decker, he also directed RoboCop 3, and he co-wrote The Predator. Uh, in this one, in Creeps, most of the main characters are named after some horror movie makers. We've got Romero, Carpenter, Raimi, Landis, Hooper, Cronenberg, Cameron, C. Minor, Wes Craven, among others, I am sure. And due to the short notice and not much time for casting the beta zombies that are in the movie, the guys on the FX crew played the zombies and created their own life cast and makeup, so they got to portray them as both dead and alive. And last thing I want to mention is that this film actually has two different endings, which we will discuss later. It's a very brief change, but we'll talk about that later. So I am very excited to chat about this movie with you all, but before we get into it, What is you all's relationship with this movie? And what did you think? I had never heard of this movie before. It must have come out right when I was on my way to college. And so I was not paying any attention. But it's odd. I did see The Fly at at the (laughs) drive-in. So I was paying a little bit of attention. But this movie was nowhere on my radar. I'd never heard of it until you picked it for this podcast. Cool. This movie was definitely on my radar. One of my... Best friends from high school who I watched a lot of horror movies with. This is one of his all-time favorite movies. My friend. Well, and my so one of my other friends, uh, the three of us used to watch a lot of movies together, and my other friend told me repeatedly, you can skip this one. You can <gasps> Not skip my this friend. one. <laughs> so I skipped it until we watched it for this podcast. <gasps> you really? So this was this was a, fir- a first viewing for me. Wow, um, for all three three of us then because i have never heard of this movie (laughs) yes Yes. (laughs) and i actually um there are so many movies with very similar titles like night of the living dead night of the creeps night of the demons night of the comet Mm -hmm. and um this first scene that we're going to talk about in a second had me thinking maybe i put the wrong one on i was like "Uh, yep yep um i'll also say i am not a huge fan of like horror comedy that's not really my genre but this really worked for me i am so excited that all three of you are watching it for the first time or 
that's exciting to me. <laughs> um, I I first watched this movie during you know spooky season. I had a long list of things to pull from. So I, probably two Halloween, three Halloweens ago, I watched it for the first time. Um, oh, you know what? I was probably trying to watch a bunch of Tom Atkins things I hadn't seen yet. That's what this was. I, I'm a big fan of the cheesy Tom Atkins. I just love him as an actor, as playing a detective, and um, loved him in Halloween 3, so I, that was probably why I watched it. Um, but I was, I liked it way more than I thought. I just thought it was fantastic. It was funny. It had some like cheesy 80s gore. It's not a great film. It's not like, and I just, I liked how it's the, it was so over the top into like throwbacks to every other movie you could think of. And, but it was also done in a way that was not terrible to me. I just thought it was really fun and campy. So just, plus I just love a good, like cheesy eighties movie. <laughs> so this fit the bill for this me. This is certainly that. <laughs> this, is, this is above and beyond. <laughs> above and beyond whatever I could have expected or dreamed of. Um, all right, so let's get into it. There's a lot going on in this movie. Uh, we start out after some really cool intro credits. We see a spaceship and some baby-looking aliens blasting. <laughs> That's the only way I can describe it. They are baby-looking <laughs> aliens and they're blasting guns. And they say, in their language, that experiment must not get off this ship. And directly after that, we see a mysterious cylinder flying off their ship. Then we head to Sorority Row, 1959. The movie turns black and white. And we see a frat house and some gals and guys mingling outside. Classic cars are driving around. A young man named Johnny is in a convertible where the radio announcer says that Crestridge Institute for the Criminally Insane put out an APB. And then he turns it off and we never hear the warning. He picks up a girl named Pam and they had to make out point. There, a cop tells them that a nut is on the loose. The cop turns out to be Ray, Pam's ex-boyfriend. While staring at the night sky, they see a bright object falling. They head off in their car to find it. Johnny goes into the woods to look, leaving Pam all alone in her car, and she hears the radio bulletin about the escape mental patient, armed with an ax that's on a murder spree. A stranger's legs appear on screen near the car. Meanwhile, Johnny finds something in the woods, the same cylinder that fell out of the spaceship. Something flies out of the tube and into Johnny's mouth. Back near the car, we see a man raise an ax over Pam, and then we fast forward to 1986. So that's our intro. <laughs> Boy, how did you guys feel watching that for the first time? <laughs> well, right off the bat, with the title coming onto the screen, what do we all think of? Anything? Stranger Things, right? Oh, oh yeah, I guess. Oh, really? I the way it's it, slow and things come together. Yes, sure. I thought it looked just like Stranger Things, which is so funny because Stranger Things came out you know, a few years ago. But it's all part of this, is it a throwback? Is it current? Like, even there was a woman uh, in the sorority. Wait, no, sorry. That's the other movie I just watched. (laughs) 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 But I just thought that was such a great opening scene. And then with the aliens. (laughs) Yeah. It's like so many movies <laughs> of that era that yeah it, it's just like that had <laughs> just come out like star wars and alien both combined oh, like the airlocks were exactly the same as alien the like hallways looked the same as alien and right. then the aliens looked hilarious <laughs> yes. um, so okay i need to clarify something here you mentioned that in their language they say that it can't get off the ship. Did were there subtitles that I missed or something? Oh, okay, because I only saw their language, so I went, "Oh, oh really? this is yeah." I mean, I believe me, I understood what was going. On, <laughs> but, I didn't but, realize I didn't have subtitles on. Yeah, I okay. Well, the version appeared because it was not English. copy I watched had the strange little their strange little language, and that was it. So I'm like, well, I guess it doesn't matter what they said. <laughs> That's good to know. Aww. I'll, I guess I have to watch it again. It's just funny because then immediately after it like is off, like three seconds later, it's flying out of the ship. Yes. <laughs> I would have loved to have seen more of that, though. I would watch yes. a whole movie of those weird little fleshy baby aliens. <laughs> Wait a minute. Don't they look just like, um, what's the Peter Jackson horror movie? Oh, uh, Bad Taste. Yes. Yeah. That's what it reminded me of. Well, that came out a year later. Oh, okay. So... There was yeah. something in the air. <laughs> yes, bad taste. <laughs> I love that the aliens have little butt cheeks. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I genuinely enjoyed the little alien sequence, and I wish it was a lot longer. 
Yeah, I wish we went back to them too. Yeah, like I would love a scene where they're like flying around. Like, is it over there? No, fuck. Why would it be over there? <laughs> like, where did all our shitty worms go? Yeah. <laughs> like, falling around. <laughs> I also liked how sour all of their faces look. Yes. Oh yeah, they all look angry. They look constipated. <laughs> yeah, it, it, this scene is very brief. What is it like? Two minutes? If that, I'd be surprised. Like maybe. Maybe a minute. Yeah, it's so yeah. short. Yeah. In one yeah. of the commentaries, they talked about how all of those actors in the alien suits had to be like basically athletes because they had to wear these like huge like rubber suits. But also, I guess it was like hot as hell on that set. Oh God, I can imagine. So they're just running around like super hot in little butt cheek suits, <laughs> little, little latex butts, <laughs> little butt cheek suits. <laughs> um, I love the quote. The guy's a cop. He has no future. I think that's super funny. And then he's also the only person in the movie whose future we actually see. And it seems fine. It's not that bad. It seems pretty bleak. He's miserable. Well. <laughs> he keeps trying to kill himself. What? Did I miss this? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. He's miserable. Hmm. He's, just, he's just miserable. Remember when he had the door taped up? And he had the oven, the oven on. Yeah. Open. Oh, does he have like a briquette or something? He he had the oven, like all the gas open in the like in the in his oven in his oh. house. Do you remember this scene? Yeah. I I, I it was bleak. <laughs> his life sucks. Well, <laughs> never mind that. Let's cut all of. They're this right. Off. He has no future. <laughs> well, but would he have a future before he watched an axe murderer chop off the girl he liked? Right. Yeah. Hmm. At makeout point. Or whatever. I just made that up. But yeah. That's sort of that's what it's supposed to. be. I mean, it might as well be called yeah. that with the with the tone yeah. of this movie. Yeah, they're gonna get frustrated with each other for sure. Kissy Hill. Yeah, Kissy Hill. <laughs> Make up lookout point. So after we're in 1959, there's a murder. We head to Pledge Week 1986. The movie is now in color, and we get our introduction to two guys, JC and Chris. They are walking outside a frat party at the Beta House. Chris spots a beautiful girl. She's gorgeous from across the way that he just has to meet. Her name is Cindy, and they get to eventually meet her inside the house party. Chris thinks he's in love and decides that they need to join the Beta fraternity to get in with her. They pledge the Betas and are sent on an initiation mission. They have to steal a corpse. We find out that the head of the frat is Cindy's very blonde boyfriend, Brad. We then head to a lab and see a scientist. Chris and JC break into the lab and find a man in a cryogenic chamber. It's none other than Johnny, the boyfriend from 1959. Um, so the boys mess around, the chamber opens, they start to carry the corpse and it moves. The scientist comes back and the two boys run off screaming and head back to their dorm room where they argue. We then see the epic scene that introduces us to present day Ray the young cop from 1959. He's in a white suit, sipping from a coconut with girls in bikinis nearby. It then flashes to the 1959 scene where a young Ray sees Pam being murdered by the escape mental patient, only it's a skeleton. All that was a nightmare Ray was having. He wakes up, the phone rings, he answers it saying, what does he say everybody in unison? Throw, Throw me. me. To the cop on the other end, Ray heads over to the lab, drops a bunch of one-liners as they start the death investigation. There is now only one body, when at first there were two. The formerly frozen Johnny is now gone. So that's how we get to see Ray, a.k.a. Tom Atkins. I love the friends. I'm obsessed with both of them. Mostly JC. 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 Yeah. I didn't remember a single person's name in this, so I'm listening to this like, oh, his name is what? I had to go back after I took all of my notes and like fill in what their names were because I was just using like I, like other guy. Uh huh. Other guy seems drunk. Other guy's weird. <laughs> yeah. Why did he do that? Um, There's main guy and best friend in my notes. That makes the Bradster so cop. <laughs> yeah. JC is short for John Carpenter, and I forget what his last name is in the show. It's John Carpenter Hooper. Hooper. Yeah. yeah, John Carpenter right. Hooper. And Why do Chris I remember that? Romero. that his first name. Isn't that cute? I <laughs> liked it. It took me a second, but I started recognize, recognizing Oh, yeah, those. Cynthia Cronenberg and... I don't know, one of the officers was Cameron and Ramey, and I just kept writing, get it, every time yeah. they would do that. <laughs> yeah. The other thing I got stuck on is this main guy is Blake Lively's brother, older brother. So every single time he was on screen, I was like, oh, it's Blake's brother. There's a Weird. bunch of, There's a bunch of Livelys. I know him as Bro um, Robin Lively's brother. 
because she he, was in a bunch of 80s. Oh, and he's rusty in European Vacation. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. really? right. Oh, okay. That's how I knew him, his face okay. anyway. I couldn't figure out why I recognized him um, <laughs> for the entire movie, but yeah. Huh. That's great. He's yeah. much younger. There's not that. very many people I recognize in this. Like, there's a there's one of the blonde sorority members later in the film. I recognize her from a bunch of 80s stuff. Um, well, that scientist in the beginning is like yeah. a character actor yeah. in a ton He's of shit. He's in a bunch of stuff. Um, I meant to look him up, too. I have a fun fact about someone at the end of the movie <gasps> who I recognize, too. Mm. Awesome. I went down a weird rabbit hole, <laughs> and I'm taking you all down with me. <laughs> Well, I love the crime scene investigator who is uh, eating a sandwich while he's investigating yes. the, the murder in the body. Puts and it down on the ground, too. <laughs> yes, he does. Mm. <laughs> uh, I'm a big fan of the fact that the frat house just kind of looks like a lake bar with like the <laughs> weird wood paneling and bullshit on the walls. And also every frat boy looks like they're 40 years old. <laughs> and, yes. um, Especially the boyfriend, the blonde head of the band. Oh, yes, absolutely. A man. A four year old yeah. Nazi. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I also, from that particular chunk, I think the biggest, the biggest laugh in this movie for me is when JC goes over to talk to what's her face and he's talking about his friend over there, and we cuts to him, and he turns and spills the water all over <laughs> that guy. That that I got like that I got a really big laugh out of, and rewound it a couple of times just to see. Yeah, this movie. I mean, I love. For me, of course, I love the beach scene, the nightmare that Tom Atkins is having, where we see him in the white suit, Ooh. and that's the same scene, like from Jaws. Like, see, yes. even some of the shots were just like taken from other things, but it's just a really fun introduction. Of course, he's having a nightmare, and it's a terrible thing that's haunted him his yeah. whole life. You know, watching Pam being murdered, but it's just such a quirky, bizarre way to meet him. And then I also love. Like immediately, all the over-the-top one-liners in that investigation. He walks in. He's just like smoking and throwing his cigarette, and putting it out on the floor, and he's like, "What is this?" Uh, he's just, it's just amazing. It's just so goofy. <laughs> this this movie, it, like, it suffers without him on screen. I think, and I mean that like, a, I, I don't mean like the movie is all all out and out bad, but he's he he's the reason to watch this movie. I think, um, and so. <laughs> Something that was funny to me about that dream sequence of him sitting on the beach is like if you pause it and look really closely at where he's sitting, first of all, he's not sitting on a towel. He's not sitting on a chair. It's definitely not the beach. It's definitely <laughs> just like a parking lot that they put a bunch of bullshit around him to make it look like he's at the beach. Um, but I but I loved that. And then they cut to him in his house and it, he's miserable and he's always sweaty. Mm-hmm. <laughs> sweaty, drinking, yeah. smoking. Yeah. And definitely not stoked to be wherever he is. And I like the, it's the typical like friendship duo. Um, there's like the shy guy and there's the, wi- the wise cracking, wiser friend. He was so funny. Mm-hmm. I loved like, every, I had to stop writing down his lines because it was taking too much time. Yeah. Um, I really love how he's like, he, he says something about how the main guy has to meet the girl before he can marry her. And then at one point, he's like asking the main guy if he knows what he has to do. And he's like, yeah, I have to join a frat. He's like, or you, you can like start by talking to her. <laughs> yeah, see, he's you got the dumb friend and then the one who's not going to get the girl but has better advice. Um, as someone who wasn't <clears throat> alive in the 80s, is this like what the 80s felt like? <laughs> It's definitely what 80s movies felt like. Yeah. I never went to a frat party when I was 10. <laughs> Why not? I don't know. <laughs> Wasn't invited. <laughs> but like if I but the outfits like that some of the girls were wearing like those are things I remember like the girls who were older than me like wearing. Mm-hmm. Um There's lots of paneling in the the house. I have questions about this like 80s bully that I've seen in so many movies. Like did people actually act like the that? Blonde Classic it? dude behavior. Yeah. Just like big, I think it still bag. happens to some extent. Yeah, yeah. it's like different now. I feel it's like evolved. so much of bullying when I was a kid was like through text and online. There's and usually stuff. a bully. I mean, if you think about like, I think of James Spader as like such a classic like '80s bully character in different movies. Or if you look at like Johnny and the Karate Kid, the original Karate Kid, before we see him like somewhat redeemed. Um, there's all. It's like there's a lot of like I feel like formulaic things about '80s movies. And this one. This one crams it all in mm-hmm. there between plus, plus more. Yeah, yeah. I thought of Christopher because I think the Bradsters were in a Milton shirt. 
It's got a shirt that says Milton across the front. Oh, I'm, geez, I missed that. Whoa, yeah. I mean, it's a really important part of the movie. <laughs> Milton? <laughs> <laughs> so after last time when we were like, Milton? 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 Yes, where we, were try- where we were sure that we were getting it wrong. <laughs> it was an author or something. We cut this out for anyone yeah. listening. But, <laughs> it was um, good. We'll release it in a later <laughs> mailbag episode. <laughs> It popped on screen. I was like, Milton, yeah, we found him. (laughs) I also love that this movie has um, like a 50s flashback because I feel like it just goes to show how much people love like a 30 year cycle. It's like, yeah, this is like Greece and a bunch of other things referencing the 50s and 60s. And that still continues today. Mm -hmm. We are always stuck in a weird nostalgia loop. Back to the future. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, oh, I think about like it even. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. it's like gonna be tough original. when we get to the early two thousands nostalgia thing where we're. It's all we're, crap. It's all crap. It's all like super racist and like Limp Biscuit. Yeah. Although they're kind of <laughs> having their day that again. Decade out of my life. Good for you. <laughs> That's when I was in high school. That's when I was trying to fit in. Yeah, same. <laughs> it was a really cool time to grow. So up. I was trying to pretend to be a grown up and have a job, <laughs> be miserable. <laughs> and then I started working here. Oh, and it all changed. Um, Second favorite line: "Hey, at least we don't have to have sex with a farm animal." Yeah, <laughs> that is a low bar. Yeah. Oh my god, is, was that an 80s common thing? frat thing in the eighties? <laughs> <laughs> it could have been a challenge in another movie. Yeah, I but wasn't. I, a in lot a of eighties movies have like that <laughs> that house party scene where people are like trashing the house and right, right. Yep. I also in this in this that house party scene, they're all drinking like branded Miller cups of beer. It's all Miller beer. And then later on, we get that great line about Miller. It's Miller time. Miller time. Oh really? Um, <laughs> but like this is my first time. I think I've seen it three or four times now. That was the first time I realized. Oh, it's all Miller everywhere. So I thought that was cute. Wow, I never would have yeah. picked that up. Well, I was looking for that stuff because I was desperately trying to figure out like how did they have a budget to make this movie? <laughs> it seems like it was made for nine dollars. <laughs> Especially, yeah. Anyway, those baby get to later aliens were worth more than nine dollars. They, I think, they the blew zombies. the whole budget on the beginning of the movie. Yeah, because the zombies are. Uh... <laughs> and the one like <laughs> sort of animatronic-looking zombie thing, but yeah, it's fun. Also, the creeps. I think that's pretty fun. The creeps. Oh, are... we haven't seen the creeps yet. Oh, okay. I'll be oh, quiet. There's creeps in this movie called Night of the Creeps. The little turds, the little yeah. turd alien things. Yeah, the little slugs. Yeah. <laughs> All right, are we ready to move out? And get beyond this house party. Who's ready to leave? The party? Are we going to steal a corpse I now? Think the party's oh. over. The party's over. Yeah, let's figure out where party's the body's going to end up. You guys all did that in college, right? right. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I was dared to steal a corpse. I didn't do it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm, you're not in the frat. I'm too good. For, I didn't make it. That's right. <laughs> I had a friend who was going to study mortuary science for like five minutes, and that was the closest I got. Whew. Did they steal a corpse? They don't they, need to steal them. They got. They changed their open access. They've got open access to as many corpses <laughs> as they want. <laughs> all right. So we have officially left the party. Uh, Cindy goes back to her sorority house, and a friend asks her randomly where she can store the brains in jars that she needs for a class. So she tells her just to put them in the basement. Uh, we see, finally, a dead Johnny. He's creepily creeping along, heading to the sorority house. A cat gets let in. Meow. Tension builds. We finally see Johnny trying to get in Cindy's window. His head splits open, and we get our first look at the slug-like creeps that crawl out of basically his face and away. Ray and the rest of the cops show up to the house and find Johnny's dead body out front. Ray looks around, finds the house mother's cottage, and has flashbacks in black and white of a body being buried. The next day, we are back with our little friends Chris and JC, and they have an altercation with the betas. Cindy flips her boyfriend Brad off, and she ends up helping Chris and JC. Later at the police station, Ray interrogates the boys, um, Spanky and Alfalfa, he calls them, about being recognized by the janitor at the lab. They confess, and then back at the lab, the dead scientist comes to life and attacks the aforementioned janitor. Back at the sorority house, we see some creeps crawling along, and the Bradster calls Cindy, and she hangs up on him. Go, girl. (laughs) Another girl in the house hears, hears a sound, and it's Gordon the cat from earlier. But now it has a nod off face. Worm face. Yes. Worm face? It's, it's, it's cool. I like that, that creepy cat face. Wah. 
Well, I not feel bad for the cat. Oh, I am too. But it, you know, I don't even think it was a. It was like a you know. Pretend it was cat. a real cat. No. You know what's weird though <laughs> is the dog I was fine with later. I'm like, yeah, of course it's. Well, because it, the the way that that dog looks in the middle of anyway, we'll, we'll get. We haven't that. met the dog yet. It made it another big laugh and rewind part was that. Um, I have to ask a question. There's a thing that happens in that chunk that I I wondered if it was the debut of the real operated middle finger. Uh, when she did that, I was that the first time that that's ever happened in a movie. No, that is a good question know. though. I. First of all, I love that. Oh, it's really? a great gag that anybody if mm-hmm. if the listener doesn't know what I'm talking about, you pretend like your 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 fist Cranking. has a crank on the side of it and you crank your middle finger up. This is also where we get the hey babe, it's the Bradster line. Oh my I think. god. Yes, yes. And this is also where I noted that there's no real score to this movie, which is <gasps> oh, weird. There's a lot of these long sections of silence. Like like a bunch. I I noted it multiple times where it's like no no score here. Interesting. That is really interesting. I feel like I noticed that subconsciously, but like yeah, maybe they couldn't afford not it. consciously until you mentioned it. This movie had kind of a bigger budget. They made for like five million dollars in eighties money. Oy. They had. I know for Monster Squad, Fred Decker's follow up. That one had music. <laughs> That's oh. good. I mean, yeah, I remember, I remember <laughs> thinking that. Yeah, I've seen that one like a hundred times. So Somebody gave remember. him the note, and he was like, "Ah, I should put music in my movies." Oh movie. shit! Yeah. Oh shit! Do people do this? You okay. don't just want to hear people walking? They are too busy writing <laughs> the Predator. Um, mm. No, there's a lot of fun little. This is a lot of back and forth in here. Um, I love it also when Ray heads up to the sorority house to see the body, and he stops to literally smell the roses. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yep. I wonder if he just. Yep. I wonder if he just like threw that in there. I feel like he's really good at just like doing his own little thing. Um, so many of my notes in the beginning of this movie are like, "What the fuck? What? <laughs> Am I watching the right movie? Like, what? Yeah. What? Do all sororities have an old lady that lives there too? I think <laughs> Is, that used to be a thing. Was like, that a like thing? A thing in, um, okay. Uh, Black Christmas. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that one has oh, God, it. that's a good movie. Which um, is my only frame of reference for the house mother. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> or she was pretty cool. Yeah. She just, like, drank upstairs. Mm-hmm. Um, but this one, this one, she's just, she's, like, watching Plan 9 from outer space yeah, or something. she gets it later. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, yeah. There's some little Easter egg where <laughs> that movie is mentioned in the 50s part, mm-hmm. and then she's watching it later. Like, it's... On at the movie theater or something. I don't quite remember the details, but they made a long list of every single thing they wanted to reference and put in this movie, and they just went through and checked things off. They sure did. Yeah, like, oh, heck, we'll mention lot. Plan Nine three times. Why not? I was not <laughs> expecting to see a man in a freaking tube. I was like shocked when they find the body. Oh, the He's cryogenic chamber. Like, kind of looks like Robert Power Patrick. Rangers. What? <laughs> kind of looks like Robert Patrick <laughs> from Terminator Two. Oh. I, oh. I, I wrote, is that Robert Patrick? And then I Googled it, and it's not. I just saw him in, oh, what was that movie? I'll have to look Robert up. Patrick? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, The Faculty. That oh. movie was weird. <laughs> sure. John lot, Stewart's in that, isn't he? There's a ton of famous people. Yeah. John Stewart's- Henry Winkler's in that, too, I think. Usher's in it. Whoa, this is, a, this is a- Noted <laughs> thespian Usher. <laughs> this is a cat. Did you know Usher has a last name? I Raymond. Didn't, until I saw the credits. <laughs> Why do you know that? <laughs> I've seen the faculty. <laughs> wow. Probably like I think when anyway. We're we're doing the sidebar thing that I know you don't want this to. Uh, I just feel bad for the editor. The f- editor's leaving all this shit in. Hell yeah. <laughs> you know, though someday I want to be so cool that I just <laughs> hold out my hand. And my underling just puts my sunglasses in my hand when I want to make an exit to a cool scene. Yeah, yeah. We can make that happen. I'll yeah. do that for you, Christopher, anytime. <laughs> Next story hold, time. That's, I'm just going to hold my hand out, <laughs> just like the Bradster did. And I'll hand you a puppet or a story <laughs> bag. Or, you don't even wear sunglasses, or sunglasses Christopher. Hey. You don't wear sunglasses. I want them anyway. I'm right. um, the Christopher Stir. <laughs> the Christer. The Christer. <laughs> yeah. That's hilarious. Um, we've got some collegiate tomfoolery. That was a good quote. Oh, I did like the dead scientist who was like walking down the hallway. He was dead, bright, bright red blood with the scissors. Scissors and, like, neck, and nobody's looking at him. Yeah, yep. there's a, there's many instances where you see the, the zombies are present, but nobody's looking at them, and they just pretend like things are like nothing's happening. So mm-hmm. I I like that. Though that was kind of funny. 
corpses that have been dead for 27 years do not get up and walk by themselves. Cut to a corpse walking by <laughs> yeah. That's nice. also a line that was in the Monster Squad. I read that after. I've never seen the Monster yeah. Squad. I don't know if it hits well as an adult watching it. I mean, I do, but I watched it in 87, and I was a huge fan. It's fun. Yeah? It's fun. I think you might have sent me a video of it once, Amanda. I, I don't know. It's really, I love it. I love little boy adventure films. Like, I was watching The Goonies and Stand By Me and Outside. I just love all those. So, for mm-hmm. me, that was a whole genre. Yeah. Um, You could throw Stranger Things in there, like, right. if you want to. But the 80s, like, Monster Squad was, like, and it's one of those movies that, like, nobody has seen or talked about or heard about. And I'm like, what is wrong with everybody? What's wrong with me? Nothing, because this movie's fun. Um, it just took, like, 30 years for the world to catch up. Weirdly. That 30-year cycle. Yeah. People oh, will no. get it. It is. Yeah. Yeah. If, if you build it, they will come 30 years later. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we also have that, that funny scene where the... Ray is inter- or interrogating the two boys and then the janitors there and they all just start the screaming like banshees thing and they, it just turns into this hilarious little weird conversation and they just like immediately fess up to, to doing it. Because <laughs> they're not cool. No. They're not going to, no. they can't possibly play it cool. You know. I mean, JC could if he tried. Cut out this being depression. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have to say, Chris is just a little too pathetic and annoying for me. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, man, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. It, he's, it was a little hard to watch for me <laughs> sure. at times. It's just a little too cringy. He's kind of whiny. He's a little lackluster. Did you guys listen to the cast commentary? No. Oh, man. You, you should think about it because it's the three kids plus Tom Atkins, and they watched the whole movie, mm. and it's like That's all fun. this super fun banter. But um, at one point, I guess, um, what's the main guy's name? What main guy? Chris. Chris. Chris, is the red Chris and the girl had like a little thing on set, I guess. They also oh. did a movie together mm. after. Ooh. And um, JC's actor like kind of asked them about it, and... Uh, Jason Lively's like, uh, yeah, well, you know, like it, it was like high level flirting, and she's in the background, like, we kissed, we kissed. <laughs> <laughs> That's cute. I'll have to watch that because I haven't seen that. It's I know, I super fun. I didn't see any of the special features for this, but I recommend the the documentary. There's like a Night of the Creeks, the making of, or something. Yeah, and that's really fun because you do see the actors, and, and they probably, I think they did it like in the mid two thousands, maybe, mm-hmm. and the actors are kind of sitting together. Yeah. Um, just talking and remembering different things or there's talking heads separately of them remembering things. There's also a really cool one about Tom Atkins. What is it? The Man, the Myth, the Legend, whatever it's oh, called. Really? Oh, it's so good. Obviously, I'm a fan, but it's fun because it, it's just like him and his career and it just talks to him. And this was like mm. the most fun he's had on a movie. I, I believe Everything that. he's done, this is his most fun experience. That's funny. Yeah. Huh. I mean, it makes sense. It, do, it doesn't seem like anybody was being serious on set for this, which is good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They, I mean, they had a lot of fun. Also, I mean, because I think Fred Decker, too, was pretty young. I think he was, like, just in his mid-20s. He was 26. Yeah. What wow. am I doing with my life? Yeah. Like Stephen King or here. Stephen King. Stephen <laughs> Spielberg. <laughs> Steven Spielberg. <laughs> Got to mention him once during this <laughs> podcast, you guys. Steven Spielberg was 26 when he made Jaws. That killed me when I was in high school that as a wannabe so filmmaker. Weird. I'm like, oh, my God. I'm not going to be Steven Spielberg. Yeah. <laughs> 26. So. 26 yeah. and making Jaws, a movie that people still talk about and hold up as perfect. Yeah. I was Damn. still trying to get on the leaderboard for Dig Dug at 26. <laughs> <laughs> was, That's good, too. Yeah. I don't even know what I did when I was 20. I, was, I have no idea. I was, I was here. here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, oh, yeah. But yeah. I didn't. I wasn't part of a podcast yet. No. no. I might have been cleaning toilets. Nice. No. <laughs> I, I did that, but not for this job, actually. I was a cleaning person once. Just um, maybe on a volunteer I was, basis. But when I, I think I was like she 24. No, I, I did it because I was this uh, sidebar. You're right. <laughs> I cleaned the toilets at Target on a volunteer basis. Um, you just show up with all your cleaning supplies. Goodness of my own heart. <laughs> I noticed this place needs a little zhuzh. <laughs> um, is this the section where we see them back at their dorm room and JC is is doing the most god awful air drumming and singing to a song that we can't hear. 
<laughs> he was studying. Yeah, well, he wasn't studying. <laughs> but Chris was. Is this where he talks about getting a machine gun? I think that's the next. Next section. Is it? There's a whole other scene later. They kind of get another fight. Oh, also, I did not know that the slugs are the creeps. I thought the creeps were like the frozen guy, the Power Rangers guy. <laughs> they're, the, they're the slugs. I had a dream about the slugs last night. Ooh, I'm jealous. I don't usually have dreams, and I especially don't usually remember them, but in my dream, like, everybody else was dying, and I had to, like, open up my leg and take one of the slugs out, but if I, like, pierced it, I would die because, like, ooze would come out or something. It was in your leg? That's like Stranger mm -hmm. Things. Huh. Remember when Ellie had, like, the arm? Ellie. The <laughs> that sounds like... Our girl Ellie. It sounds L. like... L. L. Oh, my oh. God. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> I'm mixing up how to spell things. We have to know when Ellie works here. Um, when L, they have, remember, they have to cut At open the end and slice over... And, like, oh. a, little, a, a slug, it looks kind of like a small creep, crawls out of her it's leg. It's like a guinea worm. Yeah, because well, because it was part of the the creature that was in Stranger right, Things. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. mm. So funny. Um, all right, yeah. So let's let's move on to the next section. Oh, the cat had that not off face. Poor cat. Oh yeah, that's where we left off. Yeah, we with like that. the worm on one side. Yeah. Yep. The creeps are crawling around. Also, it meowed really normally, and then it made its its noise when we saw its face. <laughs> yeah. So it has the ability to switch voices. I no longer trust this cat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Poor Gordon. Yeah. Well, um, we did Aww. add the the cat to our spreadsheet that involves cats of the pod. We like to know right. cats for some reason. I have to give this movie high marks for the special effects of the creeps. Mm -hmm. Those slug things. Yeah. That's awesome. They're really neat. Yeah. Um, in one of the left or the extra footage or behind the scenes things, they mentioned that some of them they pulled on strings to make them move, and other ones were like little wind up toy things that would zoom. Aw. Hmm. Isn't that neat though? <laughs> like there's one scene where it's in the grass. It's like really like long grass, and yeah. there's a, a creep growing along that one they were pulling. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I think they did. I mean, some of the, when they shoot out of the mouth, that I don't know how they that, that, were they pulling them out of the mouth. I bet they did it in reverse, like they did in Aliens with the face hugger. Oh, that's gross! So just stand oh. there with your mouth open and wait for like someone to throw a slug in your mouth. And they reverse the film. I'm, that's just a guess. I don't know, but well, they also reversed the film in that dream sequence with Tom Atkins when the girl comes out of the water. She yeah. clearly like yes. went into the water. And I think they do that it. a lot in this. Like whenever the heads split open too. I think there's Ooh. yeah, it, there's you could there's a bunch of spots where it's like you can see weird film trickery happening gotcha i loved the forehead coming open i was like freaked out by that actually <laughs> no, which is funny because cool. this isn't like that it, this movie is not scary to me but that part i was like oh i haven't seen that before yeah. what the <laughs> fuck it's <laughs> really cool it's, it's, a, it's a fun body horror you know and then it happens multiple times in the movie too oh yeah so that is some <laughs> that is some cool um behind the scenes movie magic I also love that our main girl is, for some reason, in charge of where to store the brains at yeah. the sorority. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know. because she is because she has to. And I only mentioned that in my synopsis. Normally, I would have skipped it, but the basement becomes important later in the movie. Uh, um, so that was a good refresher. That's how they end up in the basement is because of the brains. Because where do they sleep and lay their eggs or whatever? More oh, metamorphosis. Right. That but, never yeah. occurred to but me. See, I didn't get that until Allison said... She reminded us of the brains. Wasn't that you, right. Allison? What? I did what? <laughs> <She didn't know. laughs> About storing the brains. Right. Oh. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because the. Because... You mean five seconds ago? Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> no, no, I didn't. I didn't get it. It's like I. I was puzzled at the time. It's like, why is this conversation in here? Except that it's a little gross yeah. or something. And yeah. then it reminded me. Right. Because of the basement. So, we got to so, get them so there somehow. The reason right? she asks, I mean, for the plot to make sense, the reason she asks Cindy is Cindy has to know. So later when there's a threat, she's like, oh, the basement. Because then she. And see, I was puzzled at that point. I was like, yeah, so what? <laughs> do you still, do you think they still make people store shit like that at sororities and frat houses? I don't know. Ask Allison. She's. <laughs> <laughs> None uh, of us know what happened at frat houses or sorority houses in the 80s. That's true. We need to take a field trip back in time, 30 years ago. 
Okay, I'm down. I'm interested. I got to find out what these 30 years ago? are up to. That's not long enough, man. That's that's like 90s high school for me, so I don't really want to go back to it. Actually, it'd be kind of fun. <laughs> Anyways, we're not doing that. We're still in 1986. Um, after we see the not-off face of the cat, we then go along with Ray, and Ray's in his apartment. He gets a call about the dead janitor, and we see more creeps running around. Back at the dorm, Cindy pops in to visit JC and Chris. Ooh. The three of them go for a walk and ponder how the cat came back to life. Cindy thinks she's going crazy and she thought that they would understand her story. <laughs> JC leaves to use the bathroom. Cindy tells Chris that she thinks it's a zombie that's head exploded and slugs came out. She's not wrong. Chris walks her home and JC ends up being attacked by creeps in the bathroom that came out of the head of the zombie janitor from earlier. Cindy asks Chris to the formal dance taking place the next day because this is, you know, the 80s and we have to have a formal dance. Um, after walking Cindy home, Ray shows up talking about zombies and creepy crawlies and they go back to Ray's and he and Chris chat about girls over whiskey. Ray tells the story of how his high school sweetheart was hacked to bits when he was a rookie cop. He admits to seeking revenge on the murderer by killing him and burying him in the lot that is now the house mother below where the house mother's cottage now is. We then go present day to the house mother's cottage where she's watching TV with her dog. There's a noise under the floor and the zombified murderer that Ray was just referencing burying crawls out and kills the house mother and likely her dog. Back at his apartment with Chris, Ray gets a phone call. Thrill me. He grabs his gun and he and Chris head out. <laughs> I just can't. I just love it so much. It's so hokey and funny. <laughs> That uh, that door mother sure is unresponsive for a. She long. just stares mouth agape for a while. Like, Hi. <laughs> ah, hmm, there's some tapping that I'm hearing, and then cuts her fucking head in half. <laughs> in the best of, I think the best gore effect in the movie for sure. It's fun because too, it's like so close up. Oh yeah, yeah. Honestly, if you're not going to protect your own life. Right. Oh, well. Yeah. That's what well. happens. I mean, the movie, I mean, Plan 9 from Outer Space is such an engrossing movie. I would have ignored a zombie trying to crawl out of the floorboards as well. Um, <laughs> in this section, so the bathroom sequence, a oh. couple of things. Um, first of all, I noticed that uh, all the graffiti on the door, which he's adding to, and did you notice what he's writing? No. He's writing, the love beast was here. And he doesn't get to write what the rest of it is. Um, just sitting on the toilet with his pants up. <laughs> and then also above that, somebody wrote Striper Rules. I don't know if any of you know who Striper oh, is. Yes. Striper is the... Uh, in the So we're in 1986 where hair metal is like a big thing. It's like bands like Poison and Motley Crue and Quiet Riot. Well, Striper were the Christian one. And they oh. had an album called To Hell with the Devil. <laughs> it sucks. But um, that's in the stall. Wow. It's a striper it's rules. By his stripes, you will know him, or <laughs> something like that. Is that right? Yes. The yellow and black attack. Anyway, they are. Yes. I'm, well, I'm going to listen to that right after this. It you'll love it. Riveting. You'll There's love another. It. The only graffiti. Or I, I didn't notice this on the first viewings, but I noticed that on the wall outside of the stall further away, it says Monster Squad rules. Oh, oh. but this is the year before? No, it says Go Monster Squad. They must. Oh, okay. It says, wow. it says "Go Monster Squad." They must have had a script yeah. or something. So I thought that was cool. That is cool. Hmm. Yeah, they were probably filming that when this came out. Um, what else did I write here? I also had uh, silently walking up to the dorm, no score in sight. <laughs> <laughs> Scoreless. <laughs> this was also this was also a point where. And I don't mean this in a mean-spirited way, but I wrote, this movie is bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Took, took them halfway through the movie. It's, <laughs> I was, I know I was smiling when I wrote it, but I, but this movie's bad. It's so fast paced too. Like literally everything happens so quickly. You're at, you're at Ray's house. You're at the dorm. You're at the sword. You're at the house. You're just like, boom, boom, boom. I also like how it lays out the plot. Cause there were so many moments where I was like, oh, Tom Atkins is the cop from before i had no idea and then like 20 minutes later i'm like oh he killed that guy oh my god <laughs> it's kind of a cool reveal though 
But it also kind of sets you up to be a little bit misled because doesn't Ray say something about the scientist whose head looks like it was bashed in by an axe? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he said, yeah, he asked them, does it look like it was, he was frantically, he's like, does it look like it was smashed by an axe? Mm -hmm. Wait, but isn't that kind of misleading? Because in fact, it's, or, I think that's or the next, it? I think that's the next one when, I don't remember what body, was that when they were in the lab? Could not, not, it wasn't the initial lab, this was another scene, because, maybe it was the scientist, because he had, he was piecing it together that it was Johnny that was back. Oh, Okay, but the guy who is cryogenically frozen, mm -hmm. was he attacked by the axe murderer? No. No, right. So there's a little bit of misleading stuff there when Ray says, oh, it looks like he was attacked by an axe. Well, Ray's probably confused because he remembers like the axe attack and his right. part in that. But also when the slug things come out, the thing opens. So right. I'm sure he would look at both mm -hmm. of those wounds and be like, yep. That's right. the same yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It does look no like an axe blood. wound after they Yeah, come so that's out. a good yep. question. Mm -hmm. Ask like to somebody who says, does it look like his head exploded and creeps came out? So <laughs> don't know what that looks <laughs> like. But if you said, hey, does it look like his face was smashed with an axe? You could say, okay, yeah, it does. Yeah, I tried not to think too deeply about <laughs> anything. And it's just, not a deep thing. Oh, I don't think you need Yeah, I think that's the right way to watch this. <laughs> uh, I did feel sad for um, Ray Cameron, our hero police. He was just such a, you know, I well, there's a couple of endings, but um, I was yeah. sad for JC when he was stuck in the bathroom. Mm. I was like, oh, fuck, like he can't yeah. run out of here. The sidekick's getting toasted. I love that he shut the door like that was going to fucking do anything. Yeah. yeah. And then, of course, the, the janitor as a zombie, he's like screaming like banshees and he's still laughing about that, like on his way to the bathroom to kill JC. But it, it, for this, though, we do get that tell of. I don't know why, but JC's got some matches on him, and he lights one of the little slugs on fire. Oh, yeah. So that's mm -hmm. a little tell that mm -hmm. comes in later, too. And you're like, why is he, like, and they just kind of, like, fizzle and foam a little bit? The yeah. Little, the cute little slugs? Yeah. The cute little slugs. The cute little slugs. Mm. <laughs> you're the one dreaming about them. Hey, well, <laughs> <laughs> can't deny that. <laughs> She's got you there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so any other comments before... We're just cruising along here. This is a fast-paced movie. We didn't get to JC's tape yet, did we? Oh. Not yet. Not yet. Okay. We're almost one. there. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right now, um, Ray just left. Yeah, they just got the phone call about um, the house mother, and so Ray. And I also like how like nothing's under the bed, but like he's got his like gun under there. Very clean room. Yeah, I noticed that. My bed is packed full of shit. <laughs> <laughs> and isn't he reading Raymond Chandler in one scene? I don't know. I don't know. I, I think so. I don't know about that, but it was cracking me up because Ray's entire apartment is like mystery magazine or like detective <laughs> yeah, stories. Right. Right. Like, I didn't yeah. know that. You're really I, into this, huh? <laughs> I think when he's in his, his chair mm. right before the phone rings. <laughs> um, has he like confessed to stuff yet? He, to... Jason Lively's character? Yes. He he did that before we saw her getting killed. Gotcha. Right. That part was He told awesome. the story. They did a flashback <laughs> and he told her. Yeah, it just happened. I love, he says, look, detective. Now, I don't mean to be rude or anything, but other than just kind of wanting to confess to a murder, <laughs> is there a point to this story? <laughs> Same. Those were my thoughts exactly. What, what are we doing here? <laughs> Yeah, Ray needs a little therapy session. Right. <laughs> Apparently it's a 20-year-old, 19-year-old named Chris. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's a great, I mean, that's a good, that's a good sentence. And that's a good sentence for Chris, too, because that's like a strong of him. Also, why does he call that kid Spanky? Spanky I, and Alfalfa. Alfalfa. I don't understand aren't the, that. The, aren't they? Um, They're from the our gang. The what? Our gang. <laughs> Little our, rascals, little yeah. rascals, little rascals. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh. yeah. Spanky and Alfalfa are two yeah. of the little are two of the kids. They were like little kid characters. Yeah, oh, okay. he mentions he calls them that earlier. Yep. Well, because um, he shows up and he's like, but that's in the next he, one. They yeah. got Alfalfa. Yeah. yeah. Like, what? <laughs> yeah, I like okay. that part. I do too. Um, all right, so Ray is he got the call. He's been thrilled, and then he heads off to the house mother's cottage to find out what is going on over there. Um, 
Ray Cameron, he gets there. The house mother is being wheeled away, and they say that the dog ran off. Important point. The cops are on the prowl looking for the murderer, and one car spots the suspect, an undead Johnny. Ray catches up with him and says, I already killed you! He shoots him and creeps fall out of his head and skitter away. The next day at the university, it's the day of the formal, because you have to go on with the dance. Um, Chris can't find JC. There are montage scenes of the girls getting ready and then the, at their place, and then there's a bunch of the guys getting ready over at the beta house. And there's a scene intermixed with Chris getting ready, and then he spots something he spots a cassette tape and a little letter or note from JC. So he listens to the cassette and it's a recording. A zombified JC reports that a creep has gotten him and that he's likely dead. He tells Chris about how he killed a creep with a match. And he says that fire is what kills them and that he's gone to the furnace room. Chris immediately heads down to the furnace room and he finds a dead JC. But the formal dance must go on. The betas, oh my gosh, these betas are so over the top. The betas hop in this giant party bus to head over to the dance. Um, Cindy's boyfriend, the Bradster, he's outside the sorority house. He's drinking. And when the house mother's dog appears, a creep shoots out of his mouth and into Brad's mouth. Love that so hard. Sorry, Brad. Um, <laughs> we see Ray back at his apartment. He's drinking. His door is taped up and he's got the oven on. Um, not a good scene there. Um, well, it is a good scene, but it's not a good sign. But then there's a knock at the door. So he, re he removes the tape and there's Chris crying. And he announces that JC, or Alfalfa, as Ray calls him, is dead. He ex then explains the process of the creeps. Meanwhile, the betas are still partying on the bus, which gets attacked by creeps after the driver spots the dog in the road, the same dog. Um, Chris and Ray head to the station requesting flamethrowers. And Ray, oh my gosh. Um, so the betas are now zombies, and we see the dog again. Back at the sorority house, zombie Brad shows up, and Cindy turns him down. Doesn't even realize he's a zombie. She's just, like, turning him down. Um, and creeps are coming out of his head. Ray and Chris arrive and hit him with a flamethrower. The rest of the betas show up, and it's an all-out zombie attack with so many, so much fire and so many creeps. It seems over, but there are creeps in the basement. Ray heads to the basement to finish them off. Cindy and Chris get out. The house blows up, appearing to have killed Ray. Folks gather outside in the aftermath. Cindy and Chris kiss, and then the dog appears, the same dog. And a creep jumps out of his mouth and heads towards Cindy. The end. Roll credits. <laughs> that was a long piece, but oh my goodness, what fun. Uh, <clears throat> definitely my favorite line in the movie happens in this, which is on the bus when, uh, I don't remember the guy's name. It doesn't really matter. He goes, we're going to get done, dude. <laughs> I wrote that down too. <laughs> um, <laughs> This is this is in the midst of that the great eighties, very eighties montage of babes and dudes getting ready yeah. at their various places. Uh, this is where we see a whole bunch of nudity, guys slamming beers, pouring each other little bits of Budweisers in a moving vehicle and um it's very yeah. comical. The whole bus scene of those, like again, these look like they're forty year old men, and they're just like, rah, rah. like when do like, like men on a party bus going to a dance, whether you're like you know nineteen or fifteen, like when do they act like this? They're just like rah, 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 these, literally jumping and taking like two sips of beers and these smelling. dudes are turned up to like thirty. <laughs> yeah, it's like, <laughs> like it's, it's too much. It's yes, it's a very high tea situation on that bus. <laughs> it's very rowdy and bizarre. Yeah. I love that Tom Atkins is just like at the end of his rope, he's just like, I killed you in front of all of his coworkers, <laughs> just confessing to murder left and right. Yeah. Doesn't care. I like how there's no like discussion among the there's no real like plan among any of the police. They're just like in their patrols cars, like driving around patrolling. Ray is off he's off the clock. He's got his shotgun. He just illegally took those flamethrowers he put a gun to the other cop's head to get the flamethrowers from the the precinct so he's just on his own and it <laughs> my fun fact is about that guy who gives him the, the flamethrowers mm -hmm. i didn't look him up but he's somebody tell me he is he somebody is somebody his name is dick miller um and i recognized him so i looked him up on imdb 
And he has like a little name tag, even though I think he's just credited as like a cop at the end. But it says W. Paisley and they call him Walt. Then I went down a fucking <laughs> oh, rabbit hole. He played hole. Walt in some movie. He plays a character named Walter Paisley in Bucket of Blood, 1959, Hollywood Boulevard, 1976, The Howling, 1981, Twilight Zone, the movie, 1983, Chopping Mall, 1986, mm-hmm. this movie, something in 1994, Rebel Highway in 1994. Schmobo? I don't know what that is, but 2015, <laughs> The Adventures of Biffle and Schuster. Also don't know what the fuck that is. These are all movies that we will definitely do for the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> and in 2019, which was also the year he died, he was in something called Hanukkah, where he plays Rabbi Walter Paisley. Wow. But I just think that's cool. Like, decades of him playing the same character in a bunch of random that's ass awesome. movies. I love those little in-jokes like that. It's like, I like how also like Detective Munch, he's in like a bunch of different, he plays a cop in many different shows. Like oh. that character is in many things. So I did read one article that mentioned something about Dick Miller. I meant to look it up. So, and I did not, I went. So thank you for, that's amazing. Isn't what, that weird? How cool. Also Shane Black apparently shows up in this uncredited. Um, well, he's friends with Fred Decker. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's cool. He's great. I don't know who that is. He wrote Lethal Weapon and he, and he was in Predator and also had something to- Did he co-write it? I think he like was co-produced it maybe or something. I know something. Fred Decker co-wrote he it. He made one of my favorite, uh, uh, more recent kind of comedy-ish movies, The Nice Guys, which is I think is a gravely I underrated movie. I did see that, I think. Um, he wrote Iron Man 3. He wrote, yeah. I thought I recognized that name, but then I realized I was thinking of Michael Ian Black. Oh, well, who I know very from different I guy. Love the 90s. Yeah. I, yeah. I love the, <laughs> He's the 90s, decades yeah. stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Same guy, basically. Yeah, basically. <laughs> but yeah, no, he wrote all the Lethal Weapon movies and Last Action Hero, and, um, and he's in a bunch of stuff. He's, I so, think he's one of the first people to die in Predator. I don't oh. remember Predator. But yeah, but like he and, and Dr. Boy, I think like, I'm really wrong about that together. now that I think about it. They were and like I love that movie. together. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, Dick Miller wasn't everything. Holy smokes. Same with the, um, what the fuck is his name? David Paymer. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. He's in a ton of stuff. I knew him from Get Shorty. Um, I looked through his IMDb and like I couldn't tell you what I know him from, but he's one of those actors who's in literally everything oh, that's the ever been. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's like he's just a recognizable character actor in a ton of stuff. Like it, going through his filmography, is, it it kind of takes a long time because he's still working. He's still in so like uh, Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Wow. I think is the most recent thing. It, anyway. says, it says Minx. I don't remember him from. Oh, he's in Drag Me to Hell. I remember him from that. Oh, I liked that movie. It too. It's fun. So it is cool that they had like these '80s folks. Love it. Yeah. Um, if I can steer us in a totally different direction, I was devastated when JC died. Mm-hmm. That's so sad. Like especially because they build him up as like such a great friend and like the comic relief at the beginning. Like I love that he's like telling his like male best friend in the 80s he's like i love you and i care about your happiness it's like what i don't even hear people saying that now (laughs) well then his tape those were good roommates yeah his tape is so sad he says and i could walk yeah so jc he had he walks with a crutch in the movie and so in the tape he's a zombie and zombies walk and so he mentions that he says i could walk i could do it all by myself i was walking so I thought that was kind of poignant and cute too. It's really a sad yeah. part of the movie. Somehow well, I did not that yeah. I glossed over that entirely. Oh. That is sad. He also says he doesn't have a pulse or a heartbeat, and I got yeah. like goosebumps thinking about that. Yeah, he's, like, I could you walk, know but I was you're dead. dead. <laughs> Ugh. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's like it, everything moves so fast that you barely have time to you know think about it because after that, like you know, JC's off to the dance and he's got his tuxedo and. I well, just think the, it's funny they're supposed to go to this dumb dance. I feel like the tone of the movie being so wacky, it like it takes away from the weight of that for me. Mm-hmm. Like I, at no point did I feel anything other than goofy while I was watching this. So like my note during that tape recorder thing is like, so he turned but had the wherewithal to pick up a tape recorder and record himself. 
you know, I was looking at it a little more cynically, I guess. But <laughs> well, all the other people we watch turn do it like instantly. I That's think. what I thought. Yeah. yeah, but that's one thing I don't get about the dog, though. Like, shouldn't the dog not be alive anymore? Like, once because his face doesn't burst open when the slugs come out. Normally, like when you become a zombie, the the, the creeps are like ruminating in your head, and then when your head bursts open, the creeps come out, you die, mm-hmm. or you're you're officially like you're already dead, but you're officially like no longer moving. You're like a about, you, you're dead. Yeah. So, but when the dog has the creeps inside of him, he's theoretically a dog or a zombie dog. But when the creeps come out of him, his head doesn't burst open. They just keep coming out of his mouth, you know, like a little Pez dispenser. I'm sure that there is a message board somewhere that, <laughs> oh, will, that like <laughs> deeply analyzes like, well, this is how it affects different species. Cause it's almost <laughs> like the way that it affects different species in the alien franchise. Everybody, Ooh. everybody is, is infected a little bit differently. Yeah. I'm sure they put a lot of thought into this. But also it does not <laughs> freaking matter whatsoever. No. Like, like I don't even want to like sit and like digress about that because it, for this Doesn't movie, matter. like so many other things in here are not making sense and it does not, right. you know, it's like light enough where, but also, but I mean the cat, what happened to the cat? Why isn't the cat running around spitting out slugs? The dog kept his shit together because dogs are better than all people and all cats. Uh, agreed. Boom. <laughs> Mic drop. No, the only th- it's like the only thing that matters in this movie is fun. It's yeah. it is if you if you spend any time I made the mistake for the first like twenty minutes of looking for like the uh this isn't that doesn't make any sense. It's like <laughs> that's not the way to watch this movie. If you're doing that, you're you're an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> Just the lack of the score bothered yeah. you. <laughs> that did bother me. It really, like, they could have had a really piece of shit score in it, and it would have made it even better. But Yeah. Yeah. So the gratuitous nudity is such a funny part of 80s horror yeah. teen movies. There's like a three-boob minimum or something, I swear. <laughs> I wrote that And they in have my to notes. be soapy, usually. <laughs> yeah. I swear, usually there's I like, mean, honestly, I think literally for these cheesy 80s movies, I think there was some sort of directive of like, hey, we need some boobs. Like literally, I think that was just how things were because what, is there, I think there's because three, producers are three gross. topless women. Yeah. Um, so I think... Right? Hor- modern horror movies have gotten away from that, haven't yeah. they? I feel like they like swung in a pendulum like during the 2000s. It was like, here's everything. And mm-hmm. now we're sort of back to like a more reasonable level of boobs. Yeah. <laughs> yes. But, I mean, you know, as ridiculous and kind of awful as it is, it's it kind of works in the era of nonsense oh, in yeah. horror movies yeah. yeah you know in some 80s movies there's a lot of like shower or like locker room scenes where the girls are changing <laughs> right. and like usually there there's been some sort of discussion about you know oh she's got a perfect body it's like people who are like down on themselves like a lesser character like looking at like the popular girl that kind of thing right well those scenes are put yeah. in those movies for those mm-hmm. guys on the bus so they yeah. can go oh hell yeah when they see <laughs> it and cheers each done. other <laughs> we're gonna get done dudes <laughs> I seriously this pop Stand. <laughs> <laughs> there are yeah there are so many great one-liners in this so this whole scene this is when we get um tom atkins's character ray cameron says it's miller time and then my favorite kill of like all time has to be when there's a zombie there and he grabs hairspray out of one of the girl's hands he grabs the cigarette out of his mouth and he freaking roasts the zombie with the hairspray <laughs> and his like lit cigarette, and of course it like you know it's fire and it dies. Just so fun. It's just so dumb. I'm like that's that's a perfect kill scene. That done. <laughs> I also love the girl with the flamethrower later. She like, oh. I don't think she looks particularly cool, but I think she thinks she looks really cool. She's yeah. definitely they're acting their hearts out. In yeah, that scene. yeah, and it doesn't look better as a result <laughs> but oh speaking of acting their hearts out um in one of the commentaries they talk about um the tape scene when jason lively had to listen to the best friend's tape they had to put a picture from the holocaust on his desk you can see it in the shot so that he would like look sad so he could cry <laughs> so Whoa. he would like look devastated and you can um it's in the director commentary he points out specifically when jason lively looks at it and is like Yep. Wow. <laughs> he needed that. <laughs> well, I mean, that'll do it. <laughs> that'll do it. Sheesh. 
Do you remember the scene when they're getting the flamethrower from the cop in the, in the basement? Right, right. From Dick Miller. And doesn't the cop say, "No, you got to watch that trigger once the pilot yeah, like yeah. that never came to it did, play." It did later. I think when she had it, she says something about the trigger pull. Mm. There's you remember the scene? The cop says, "Now you know." I do remember that, yeah. but I was more fixated on: Do all police stations have flamethrowers? <laughs> <laughs> also, it's like oh, literally right multiple. It's just at in that? the side behind the counter. Yeah, but oh, here it is. <laughs> I got it right here. It's like something you know, yeah. super. It's like from nineteen sixty. It looks like what you would put weed killer in or something <laughs> yeah. too. Uh, I did like how naturally that the Cindy is just wearing the flamethrower, but it does come later. Something with the trigger pull. There's a scene where Cindy and Chris are in front of the house the sorority house at the end and he asks her some or she goes to do something and it she's like testing it mm. so that came into play later but i don't remember the exact okay i missed it it's not yeah it's i'm sure crucial. she was it fully added trained little, on flamethrower it added a little bit of tension <laughs> of like the device not working and you think oh god how are they gonna kill them now but such a minor amount yeah. of tension yeah. that i just oh. we all forgot <laughs> There was I, really I, tense during this. I wrote movie. that this is the least tension I have ever felt <laughs> in, the, in the third act of a movie. Like when he's scrambling for the gun, that's the least. I, I was just like, "Are you kidding me?" Like, he's, of course he's gonna fucking get it. And he looks up and just sees her picture up on the on the wall in the sorority. And, 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 yeah, oh, it's a touching moment. Yeah, maybe the least tension moment. I've ever but, seen in the struggle for a gun. But then doesn't he get the gun and he's spinning around the room? Yeah. Yes, that he blows so with, many people away. <laughs> He, yes. They, they all he, die in like he five empties seconds. His, he empties the revolver. And, and yeah. It's so good. It's so good. Um, somebody says, I'm so sure, Brad. And I just may have been the blonde from, what is it, 16 Candles? Mm. Um, I know she's in it, but I don't know if it was she that said that. Like, I'm so sure. And I was like, oh, my gosh. Yep, yeah, that's yeah. how they talked. Um, there's also a cool scene when also the bus, when the zombies are attacking the bus and or when they all become zombies yeah. and, and their their fists are going through the windows, cra- cracking and reminding me of the fog and yeah. mm-hmm. the that church scene at the end of that John Carpenter film where they're bursting through. So that was a, scene a good that's little, actually scary. That was a, <laughs> that was a throwback. That, I mean, that was a bit of a nod. Yeah. Totally. There's like a million little nods. So I like that one a lot. Uh, how about that bus crash, by the way? Um, first of all, the <laughs> dog in the middle of the road. Mm-hmm. If you pause it and look at it, it's a real funny looking dummy. Oh. And why does the guy's... Okay, so it looks like the bus driver's eyes blow out of his head yeah. when they crash. Yeah, right. Yeah. I think it's a reference to some other director, but uh, I didn't know... I, I don't know anything hmm. about that. There was some mention of it in one of the commentaries. Okay. Well, I, I just wrote really bus hard. crash LOL because <laughs> <laughs> it made it, it was funny. It's just ridiculous. And it's cool to see the dumb betas, these giant grandpa betas, yeah. just zombified. The dog just kind of like meanders into the yeah. bus yeah. And <laughs> the bus driver drives like me <laughs> turning all the way around to tell everybody to settle down for way too long I do that all the time. Yeah. <laughs> hey all my story time supplies settle down <laughs> Christopher got a taste of that last week oh my gosh so what else happened in here um, oh there's lots of this is when we hear it's Miller time. This is when we hear that I've got good news and bad news. Oh, oh. the the classic. That's line the from classic. This, the actual classic. Um, yeah. um, one thing I forgot to mention, I loved the dummy or whatever the hell it was when um, it's like one creep surrounded by cops and they're all shooting at it and it turns around and it smiles. That was awesome. Like the dead face. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, that's... um. Isn't that the thing that says, oh, I, I already I killed, killed you. you. Yeah. yeah. That. I just love the dummy. That one looks good. I thought it looked cool. It's like. We a, see it a couple of times and it looks good. Yeah. It's like, that. it's like sinewy. It's, mm-hmm. it's. It's the same face that's in his dream at the beginning of the movie. Yep. Ooh. Yep. I thought that meant something. Yeah. It. No, no, no. It really no. does happen. <laughs> it's just a very cerebral horror comedy. Don't worry, I'm going to figure it out. A lot of levels guys. to this movie. <laughs> There's one scene that is or where Ray catches a creep in his hand and he says, Don't even think about it, you little son of a bitch. <laughs> like he literally just like catches it in his hand. Um, <laughs> just so dumb. I also love that he has duct tape over his mouth, <laughs> nose, and butthole totally open. Yeah, when he's so in the bad. basement so that the creeps don't fly in his mouth. Yeah. And then Chris is like, oh, you go, you go. And Ray's like, get out of here. He takes the tape off. And then they run out. 
and then Ray stays behind. So did anybody watch the uh, the other ending? Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is. There's an alternate ending that's like only another a minute or two long. Did you watch the, the alternate? director's cut ending? Yeah. Yeah, I so, have it. I oh. only I saw it. the original ending okay. because so you did, I you didn't watch it. the the two minute YouTube clip I sent you. I did, but that's the same as what's that's the streaming. only one you watched so you have not seen the original the original and the, the, theatrical, the theatrical ending the theatrical ending you don't see ray cameron or the spaceship or anything what that's the only version i oh, could okay. find so the oh. okay so that's that's sad um so the in the one that we are discussing today the theatrical one um the end is just the house blows up, Cindy and Chris kiss, and then the little dog comes around, and Cindy's like, oh, and then the dog's mouth opens up, and a slug comes out, and, sh and it just flies, and then it fades to black, the end. Wait, so you assume mouth? you assume that it's going into Cindy's mouth. Oh, I didn't see that. What? I know, but I'm, oh. You didn't see the ending either? It goes into the main girl's mouth? No, it just flies, it flies in the, it, you see, it's shooting out of the dog's mouth, and you assume it's gonna go into Cindy's, but it fades to black. We kissed! We kissed! <laughs> and then there's the dog. We're gonna take all this out. We're just rewatching the movie. <laughs> Bro, you're wrecking the mood. Oh, okay. and you sort of assume it's gonna fly in her mouth. So that's a theatrical one, Christopher. Oh, okay, I watched the extended. It's one better, there. isn't it? I like that ending better <laughs> no. as well. Oh is, no! I oh I'm sorry. I wasn't being serious. <laughs> I, I I think I think that's that's silly. I like seeing Ray all toasted at the okay. end. So the movie there's two different endings for the movie. The one that we're talking about today, the ending I recap was the theatrical ending where Cindy and Chris kiss, and then the slug shoots out of the dog's mouth, and you maybe assume it's going into Cindy's mouth, or and then it just fades to black, and you're like, what? Um, that's the theatrical one, and then there's the director's cut, the one Fred Decker like that's on. Um, and on the Blu-ray set, it comes with it. On the other ending, after the after Cindy and Chris kiss, fire trucks show up. A charred Ray is walking down the street, still smoking a cigarette. <laughs> Creeps come out of his head, and then he collapses. The creeps slowly head to a cemetery where we see lights from a spaceship. <laughs> lights from a spaceship are looking for something. Um, so maybe they're there to get the experiment back. Again, this is like 30 years later. Looking so that's, for my that's, tube. That's the, <laughs> that's the uh, alternate ending. So it's only like, and you can watch, if you haven't seen that, if, for listeners, if you look it up, there's a YouTube clip of it. It's like a minute or two. It's on the Blu-ray. If you watch the Blu-ray, it's got the, it's just included in the yeah. movie. Because I have the Blu-ray, but it's the two disc set, and one of them is theatrical, and one is the director's. Mm. Um, the, I, I just checked out the one that we have here at the library. The library's DVD just has the... Alternate ending one? Just the mm -hmm. director's cut. The director's cut? cut? Wow, yep. so that means it's a superior version. We went to the, we, yeah, I don't know. We went with the director's intention, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm sure whoever really, purchased and that. He really liked that one. <laughs> well, too, and then, I mean, decades later, um, there's still, like, discussion of, like, oh, let's do a sequel because that opens it up, you know? But also, for people who are in a theater, <laughs> if you're in the theater and you see... First of all, the dog's not supposed to be alive. Then you see the slug come out. And if it's supposed to go into Cindy's mouth, did they just spend the entire movie battling and doing all this? And now, like, you know what I mean? Mm. Is she yeah. going to turn into a zombie now? I thought Chris was going in her mouth. Yeah. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> so don't hate me. <laughs> but I actually like both versions of the ending. Why would yeah. we hate you for that? <laughs> I hate you so much, because it sounds so wishy-washy. <laughs> but they're both mm -hmm. of the era. Yeah, it's and, true. And they both leave you wondering. It's like, oh, you know, here we go again, or what a what a pyrrhic victory, you know. So the one version is like, oh, you know, slugs here attacking. We didn't win. Goes in Cindy's mouth or whatever. And in the other one, it's like the Raiders of the Lost Ark ending. You know, <laughs> we've got top men working on it. That damn box has got to be around mm -hmm. here somewhere. And, you know, there's a spaceship yeah. just like silently looming overhead with no score looking <laughs> for <laughs> that damn tube. I think there might be a song playing during that, isn't there? <laughs> Is I don't it know. Stan Ridgeway? <laughs> <laughs> 
That's and, right. You know, it is really cool because there is sort of a suspense. You're like, oh, what's going to happen now? Are the aliens coming back? Is there a tube? If they come back to get it, why do they take? Like, there is what are they cool, looking for? Yeah, yeah. Their ticket to go see aliens instead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can't believe you saw the fog at the drive-in this the the weekend. This came the fly, out. the fly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. fly, the yeah. fly, that fly that's so cool at a drive-in. That's Damn. so cool. Was so everybody cool. upset? I mean, it's an About upsetting movie. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. I mean, but we were just having so much fun. It's not that upsetting if you're into goo. Yeah. A lot of goo in that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And all I remember. That's a great movie. Especially is Gina Gina Davis saying, or no, it was actually um, Jeff Goldblum says, cheeseburger. <laughs> The classic line. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. All right, let me see. What do you guys think? Do you have any other recaps, any other one-liners to throw out there? I mean, there's tons of one-liners, but so I, st- but like Allison said, I stopped writing them down because it stopped being productive. Most yeah. of me was, it, most of it was going to be me just reciting stuff back. The whole opening scene when when Ray Cameron first gets to the lab, there's just so many. He's just like pew 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 pew. There's just so and you're like okay, he can't okay. help himself. His, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's. Yeah. My other favorite quote is when the cops are all having a discussion about backup or some problem, and they just hear it's a dispatch problem, <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. Aww. I really like the slugs at the end. Like they look like magnetic slime or something all together. Just like oh, oh yeah, yeah, oh the ri- like writhing in the basement in that yeah. corner, and thing. the way yeah. they all like shift, like like yeah. um uh what was that magnetic beard toy? Oh, uh, Wooly Willy. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Doesn't yeah. It look like that? A magnetic <laughs> beard toy. Yeah. Yeah. I knew exactly what that was. <laughs> the, the mustache. Man with the beard. Fetch me my magnetic beard toy. <laughs> it was a mustache. <laughs> it was whatever you wanted it to be. <laughs> like, that's so funny. Oh, wow. That thing's, yeah, th- that thing is older than this movie. I am so excited that you guys were all watching this for the first time and just like went with it. It was really fun. And it's just a fun one. It's it's a good. I was happy to to, to watch it. All right. Um. So who wants to go first with their scare meter or their movie ranking? I'll go. So for the scare meter, zero. Like there's there was nothing particularly scary Not about this movie. Not even that cat, Gordon. No the cat. I I don't know. I was just fixating on I don't know nothing scary about this movie to me. what about the bully's um, hair in fact I actually wrote at one point like Amanda did this movie scare you <laughs> <laughs> and when did you see it but you told us that at the beginning um, yeah there's there's nothing scary about this but I don't think that I think that's the point you know it's like it's so it's a zero but that that's not you know that doesn't detract from the movie mm-hmm. um, for my overall score I really agonized over this because <laughs> if I'm being perfectly honest with you, the only thing I really liked about this movie was Tom Atkins. <laughs> um, I usually enjoy horror comedies. And when I say that, I mean like more specifically Evil Dead 2, Gremlins, Shaun of the Dead, even some of the Scream movies kind of fall in that category for me. I don't think for me that this movie did horror or comedy particularly well except for tom atkins it felt like it was beating me over the head with like look at what a piece of shit this movie is <laughs> and like, i i like so it got a little bit exhausting after a while talking about it and rethinking it there are parts of it that work for me but if i have to be brutally honest this is a five out of ten movie for me i don't know that i would revisit it necessarily but maybe i maybe with a big crowd this would be a fun Ooh. i bet this would be fun in the theater at the alamo with fred decker okay i will go <laughs> scarometer i give this one nod off cat face out of five <laughs> so it yeah it's not particularly scary but um i love some of the effects and uh, it really put me back in that that 80s mindset which is a lot of fun and the movie rating I give seven out of ten creeps. So that's you know I didn't 
enjoy it as much until we got into talking about it. And then like what happens with so many of our episodes, I have a newfound appreciation for the movie and uh, how much I enjoyed it. So that's it. Oh, and it has a cat. That should, uh, you know, account for something. And it does. (laughs) Somebody's got to support the cats. (laughs) Um, all right, I can go ahead. I I freaking love this movie. I, it's so much fun. It's so campy. I mean, it's not good cinema. It's not. I think it's really hard to do. Like it's horror comedy. You, it's it's hard to do that and to do that well. And but it's just so campy and cheap. I think 1986 was a perfect time for this. Like to try out this. You know, good but bad, like horror comedy. And this one was so over the top that you kind of forget. Like, if it would have been a movie that was trying to be serious or really good or really something, and then you just had a couple of little of the weird things that were in here, but here it's like a laundry list of all the things they were trying to make nods to. And I just, for me, I mean, if Tom Atkins was like the reason he was on my list of things to watch, he's just so good in it. This is just like a staple role for him. And he went on to do other things too. And it's just, He's, he's a freaking delight. I just love him. And he was so good in here. And I'm a fan of this movie. And I will, I'll watch it once a year in October. It's on my spooky season list. And yes, I will do that. So um, I don't think it was that scary. So the show is called What Scares Us. And it doesn't mean every movie we have to pick is scary, even though it's a horror podcast. Some horror movies aren't like particularly scary. It also depends on the, the person doing the rating. Like how easy do they scare? Um, you can also take into consideration like, you know, the effects or the time, but so I don't think this one is on the list of things that scare me. So I'm going to give it a zero. Um, I'm not sure what else, uh, and as movie, when I, I rate all of my own movies on a five point scale and I rated this five out of five. Um, but I feel like I've gone really off the rails with this 10 out of 10 scale that still makes my brain hurt. Um, I'm going to give my movie rating for this an 8 out of 10. I have no complaints. I love it. It's entertaining. It just checks all the boxes. It's, it's got gags. It's, you know, got some gore and it's just funny and silly. It's a little romp. It's a fun romp. It's, and it's an hour and a half. If you've got a Friday night, you want to kill with some friends. This is like a fun movie. You know, it's Miller time. We're putting on creeps. Let's do it. Let's blow this pop stand. We're getting done, dudes. It's just fun. It's just freaking fun. So that's that's all I got to say about that. Nice. Well, I was going to give this a zero, but I did have a weird dream last night. So I will give it a one out of five for the scary scale. I wasn't scared of it at all, but I do think something about the like end scene with the slugs got in my brain um and then for overall rating i i'm shocked to say this but i really liked this movie <laughs> <laughs> i think if we had not watched the fog or like honestly the beyond i wouldn't have been into this at all but um i liked that it was funny i liked that it was kind of gross and i thought some of the effects were really cool like i loved the um like corpse that all the cops surround and shoot and he turns around and he smiles. I thought that was super good. Um, and the slugs at the end were cool too. Oh, and when that guy shows up in the window and his forehead opens up, all of these I thought were cool. And I guess I'm, now that I'm thinking about it, a lot of what I'm looking for in a horror movie is something different that I haven't seen since I've seen so much now. And there was a lot here that I hadn't quite seen. So I am going to give this an eight out of 10 as well. Wow. <laughs> Can you believe? Allison, you've come so far. I, I know. <laughs> I'm a little 80s horror baby. <laughs> I, yeah. It's, it's like if you liked this as much and like, and listing the fog and the beyond, like, I, you're in for some shit. There's a lot of good, there's no, seriously, there's a lot of like yeah. stuff along the, along these lines that we could pull from. Yeah. For future episodes. I'm sure so. Allison's got a spreadsheet going of some stuff. Yeah, I do. You can start with Piranha 3D. I've oh, seen it. My oh, goodness, my brother showed kidding? it to me. <laughs> oh my god! Well, we'll talk. About- <laughs> wow, I think we're going to go off and talk about Piranha 3D right now. <laughs> All right, listeners, uh, keep your eyes on the skies and beware of zombie dogs and cats. If you like what you hear today and would like to let us know your thoughts on this film or the show or any other movie you got, you can email us at whatscaresus at aadl.org. Thank you for tuning in. This has been What Scares Us.